Hello and welcome to Books You Can Sink Your Teeth Into podcast. I am your host, Granite A. Miller, with an emphasis on the A for annoying. <laughs> so, welcome to the show, everybody. Hope glad you're here. Hope um hope you're all doing well and having a great time this Memorial Day weekend. Um, and uh, we've got a lot going on today uh, for the podcast. Uh, we'll have Han Sheen Hank, who will be doing sports reviews uh, this week. Uh, and we'll have uh, Charlie Cleanwell coming up, we'll, who'll give us an update on the big Death Star um, things going on. Uh, apparently, the uh, the bounty hunter found the, the Mandalorian. Yeah, so we'll find out what's going on there. That's exciting news. And then, of course, at the end, we'll be joined by our famous Count Vlad and all the, the, all the goofiness that he uh, has going on in his life. So hope you all enjoy this podcast as much as I do. I've also started a couple others. Um, that was the reason for the Cowboy Hat a couple weeks ago. Um, we have a, I have a, it's called, a podcast called Lost in Charleston. And so in this one, I go and find little places of historic importance. So the um you know charleston's been around since gosh it's one of the earliest uh, colonies and so it's been around a long long time and there's so many unique hidden gems here historically that i thought i'd go out and try to put them on camera for you um to see uh, especially the harder to find ones that's kind of like uh, you know the other ones you can just look up online but i want to try to get the harder to find ones and get you so uh then i uh, also have a painting podcast of just starting so hope you uh, hope you find that relaxing and enjoyable anyway uh to get started with this week uh, it is uh memorial day weekend so i want to thank all of our veterans for their sacrifice and services and we're going to review this week a book called the rough riders by theodore roosevelt now you may go well, why the heck are you reviewing, reviewing this book? Well, I thought it was a good one for Memorial Day weekend because a couple things. Let's, so let's just talk a little bit about the book, um, but the back background, backdrop of why this book was written. So the year was roughly 1898. So we've had the uh, Civil War has come and gone. Um, and Cuba was trying to fight for its independence from Spain. And uh, the, the U.S. supported this. I remember, this was back in 1898. And the U.S. supported it. And so that got on the wrong side of Spain. And so there was a very brief conflict called uh, the Spanish-American War. And so basically, Theodore Roosevelt, who at the time was a secretary in the um, Navy, uh, got promoted to lead a volunteer cavalry, cavalry unit to Cuba to help fight for the uh, uh, for the rebels, for the people fighting for their independence, not rebels. So, well, whatever. Um, and the, the it's a really good uh, first hand account of everything that goes on. Now, there's been some criticism that. When he wrote this, it was just for, you know, self-promotion and, and self, you know, glorification. And I'm going to, okay, yes, there's a bit of that in here. But honestly, um, this book is, has survived the test of time. And when you read it, you will see there's a lot of good things to glean out of this book. I mean, it really captures, uh, he's just not glorifying everything. He, he goes into the, the details of, you know, a lot of the men suffered from malaria, just the, the horrible conditions of travel, of, of, you know, getting getting from one place to another. The, you know, like, for example, the initial idea of this unit was to have it made up of uh, Western frontiersmen. So basically, you know, cowboys, uh, you know, gold miners, um, Native Americans. Uh, there was one of the, one of the, you know, the rough and tumble frontiers people to to join and at first that's what they attracted but then when Theodore Roosevelt was promoted and took over uh, as the commander well then he got a lot of his um, East Coast uh, Ivy League <laughs> friends who were no less uh, competent and capable but they were more along the lines of you know Ivy League 
athletic type of people that so real mix of contrast of the peoples who were getting together for this you know they were all very highly motivated uh, one thing I will say is Theodore Roosevelt really did know how to motivate people uh, you'll see that in the book when you read it um, then uh, he goes on to talk about the struggles that they had just with training with equipment with getting the men from I think they started in San Antonio Texas and they could be wrong about that but um, somewhere there, and then they had to transfer all the way down to Tampa, and then they had to get to Cuba. So anyway, it's a really good book. It's a short book, you know, not, not too long. Um, densely, yes, it's pretty densely uh, written, <laughs> small font. But like I said, worthwhile read, especially this weekend with Memorial Day. It'll help, um, give, a, give a, especially if you haven't served in the military, it'll give you a good, a good idea of what, what it was like, not just in, the battle he does go on he explains about the battle and um things like that but he's really detailing his uh his thing so anyway hope you uh enjoy the book and uh it should be free on kindle because it's an older book um you should be able to download it for free if you find if you look around you can buy it of course probably like two dollars three dollars something like that on kindle but uh and if you're like me you want the hardcover you know you go to amazon get the hardcover again not that expensive so all right hope you all have a Wonderful weekend. Up next, Han Sheen Hank. All right, take care, everyone. Hello, everyone. Han Sheen Hank here, and the world's greatest Han Sheen Tigers baseball fan. And welcome to uh, this portion of the podcast. Glad you're here. Uh, we are going to uh, focus more on sports in this part. Now, if you love the Harry Potter stuff, let me know. We'll incorporate that back in. Um, but uh, for now, we're going to just do a little bit of sports on this part. So let's first talk about who else. Our number one favorite baseball team that's located in Osaka, Japan. And that is the Hanshin Tigers. Uh, they lost yesterday. They lost to their nemesis, the Tokyo Yomi Uri team. And, but they didn't affect them. They're still number one. Uh, up there, look at that, 25 wins, 19 losses. They are, you know, got about three games, uh, two, three games ahead of their nearest competitors, Hiroshima and Yomiuri. So uh, that's great. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, they need to keep on playing well and doing well. So cool. In other news, uh, baseball news, the Pittsburgh Pirates, they came back and beat the number one Atlanta Braves, 4-1 to one yesterday. So, yay, Pirates. Uh, they're keeping close to 500. They're 25 and 28. You know, I've, as I said, I, I just hope that they can keep the uh, keep this pace. Because if we look here in the Central, uh, we've got the Brewers uh, leading everything with uh, 30 wins, uh, followed closely by the Cubs. But then you see the Cardinals and the Pirates and even the Reds are not too far behind. So they can get on a bit of a winning streak. They could perhaps make, um, you know, make a catch up and uh, catch up some ground. So uh, they're doing good. I like it. Uh, in uh, the East, uh, top of the National League, uh, we have the Phillies who are just running away with things. I mean, wow. They're playing great baseball. Um, and, you know, the Braves who were considered to be uh, number one, uh, are, are still there, They're not, you know, second place, but holy cow, it's not like the Phillies almost have a 10 game lead on them. So great. Now, unfortunately, my New York Mets are <laughs> doing pretty bad. Uh, they're 21 and 30. Hopefully they will uh, find a way to get back into the groove, but we don't know. But switching over to the American League, we can have uh, some solace in that the New York Yankees are doing great so they're uh, they're up top with 37 wins you know, much like the Phillies uh, close behind them are the Orioles and then the Red Sox and the Rays are uh, actually the Red Sox Rays and Blue Jays are uh, you know kind of fighting it out down there uh, still in in striking range uh, but uh, starting to lose some ground uh, interestingly, the Orioles were predicted to be one of the top teams this year and and it's coming true. They are just, um, unfortunately, dealing with red-hot Yankees team that uh, is doing great. So, um, 
Let's switch it over now to the MLS before we get to basketball and hockey. I wanted to just point out that, uh, as we can see here in the MLS standings, Inter-Miami is just leading uh, the, the, the group, uh, but not by much. Uh, FC Cincinnati is close on their tail, uh, as well as New York City uh, F FC. The... Um, you know, Inter Miami, as we know, has Lionel Messi on it. Uh, he's been like scoring three goals a game. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm just that's a little bit uh, over the top, but yeah, you know, he's been like scoring all the time. He's really doing great, and so uh, really catapulting. And interestingly, Inter Miami won last night uh, over in Vancouver, and they didn't send uh, Messi. Didn't go to that game. They still ended up winning two to one. So, with or without Messi, this team looks like they are the real deal. Uh, FC Cincinnati is definitely a fun team. I remember them from uh, watching them in Pittsburgh when we were all down in the USL, which is, so in, in soccer, it's, uh, I think, MLS, and now it's USL uh, is the second tier uh, minor league, if you're talking baseball terms. But, you know, FC uh, Cincinnati, it was a Cincinnati River dogs or something like that uh but yeah they've uh they got a nice professional team now so i mean there still may be a usl team i should have pre prepped and looked at that <laughs> before but um but anyway yeah it's kind of cool to see them doing well so uh, now let's get over to uh hockey we got two great uh east west playoff games going on the rangers new york rangers florida panthers so if you're a new york fan good time to great time to be alive uh, you got the, you had the Knicks in basketball, but now you have the uh, Rangers in the playoffs. You got the Yankees doing well, so uh, it's a really good uh, sports going on there. But the Rangers and the Panthers, so the Panthers like clobbered them in the first game, but uh, second game Rangers came back and won. So the series is tied one to one. Uh, you know the Panthers are a very physical team, and you could you could tell they just every almost every single play they're knocking somebody down. So it's going to be a great contrast of styles um, to see who pulls this out. Uh, on the Western side, we have uh, a Dallas team. Okay. So uh, let me just get, let's get that up here. They, they played last night against the Edmonton Oilers. This uh, Dallas stars played the Edmonton Oilers and they, the stars actually won three to one. Now I was watching this game uh, and at the point it was like Edmonton was up one, nothing and Edmonton really looked like they were going to dominate. Like, unfortunately, couldn't, uh, couldn't stay up that late. I wasn't feeling too well anyway, so um, I, I missed it. But apparently uh, Dallas came back. So, wow. And, you know, Dallas was, um, they they, <clears throat> they won against the uh, Colorado Avalanche to, to move. So uh, Dallas is uh, another, yeah, this is going to be a good series. Uh, Edmonton has that one player. Uh, who is like the next Gretzky, they're saying, well, let's just give him a couple years and see if he proves out. But guy is fast as lightning. And uh, so but anyway, that's it. And in the NBA, we have, well, okay, so the Celtics, Boston Celtics, are leading the Pacers, Indiana Pacers, three games to none. Uh, it looks like the Celtics are going to go to the finals. They really are a strong team. Um, kind of was rooting for the Pacers, but... I don't think this is going to be their year. And then on the other side, we have, sorry, let me get that, get me there. I want to get that score up. Yeah. So we have Dallas. So da again, like, like New York, Dallas, great place to, great place to be if you're uh, into sports, because you got the uh, hockey team doing well. You got the basketball team doing well. So um, now they uh, took a, the Dallas Mavericks took a two games, to none over the Minnesota Timberwolves in NBA and the game on Friday night was was great I watched a bit of it and I actually got the best part I turned it on and the Timberwolves were up by like 12 points and I thought oh, okay the game's over right uh, fortunately I and then I switched channels <laughs> I'm so bad <laughs> I'm being honest um, I switched channels, and I came back and at the end this guy named Luca, he hit a three-point buzzer beater to win. Uh, uh, just one of those, you know, just that's what you watch basketball for. Basketball for you, it was like uh, last-second uh, things that you just, you know, it just makes it so exciting. So, so now Dallas is up uh, two games to none, and wow, 
Uh, Timberwolves, though, I wouldn't. Uh, not gonna. I'm gonna say I bet you the next this next game, which I think is tonight, Sunday, right? Let me see just real quick here. Um, I think it's tonight. Well, yeah, they they are playing tonight. The, um, so at 8 p.m. So the uh, I'm gonna make a prediction here. I think the Timberwolves are gonna take this one, but we'll see. Uh, that's what, that's why we watch. All right, everyone. Thank you all very much. Good to see you. Next up, Charlie Cleanwell. Hey everyone, Charlie Cleanwell here, and guess what? I'm not wearing the helmet. Nope, decided to not wear it. See what HR says. Yeah, but guess what, HR? Helmet's not on, and you're... Wait a minute, hold on. Getting a text from HR. Oh, it's an email. Sorry, not a text, an email. Charlie, we want to see you on Friday. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. That's not good. Um, anytime HR wants to see you on Friday, that usually means, you know, <laughs> oh, well, uh, I, to, I guess I'll have to start wearing that helmet again. But, you know, all I do meetings anymore. So I, I'm a, you know, sanitation engineer up here in the Death Star. I clean up stuff. Uh, particularly, I clean up Darth Vader's mess and his egg that he's always in. And uh, anyway, um, it's been nothing but meetings. Uh, we've we've been we've been going meeting after meeting after meeting, talking about, you know, how how to be, uh, you know, good good sanitation engineers, how to, you know, clean with a smile, how to, you know, all this nonsense. It's like just let me do my job. Quit giving me all these meetings all day long. Then we have to have a meeting about the meeting. Would you? I ain't doing it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charlie Cleanwell getting a, uh, giving a little bit of uh, insight into the workings up here on the Death Star. So I wanted to uh, get everybody caught up with the latest goings on. So as you know, uh, Baby Yoda came up here to the Death Star and it made the Emperor so happy. Oh my gosh, he was in cloud nine, dancing around, everything was great. And then this guy, the Mandalorian, shows up and uh, decides he's going to take, he needs to take Baby Yoda up to some goofy place, right? So he doesn't even tell anybody. He just off and goes. And I just broke the Emperor's heart. Well, in the, uh, on a side note, Darth Vader found out that Padme uh, faked her death because she wanted to break up with him. So, and then Padme started dating the Mandalorian who was up on the Death Star. So they became a couple, and it just made Darth, he was furious, out of his mind, uh, couldn't even stand still, he was shaking all the time. Um, and then, you know, choking people out, just just randomly, you know, just because just he was mad. And it's like, you know, if anybody should be attending these HR meetings about positivity and uh, keeping patience, uh, should be him. <laughs> um, all right, so, uh, so yeah, so anyway, the emperor uh, wanted to, hire some you know bounty hunters to go and find uh baby yoda but he was concerned that the bounty hunters would you know like boba fett would just kill him so he ended up hiring this guy the batman and uh batman said that uh he would get he would be able to find uh man and he did yep he did but before the batman left uh him and padme uh started getting you know, started flirting with each other, and they actually went out on a date while the Mandalorian was gone. So, apparently, the Batman tells the Mandalorian that he has to return Baby Yoda to the Emperor. Mandalorian said, no, you know, that is not the way, whatever. And and Batman said, fine, I'm just going to go back because I've been dating Padme. Well, you should have seen, <laughs> if you could see the Mandalorian's face behind that mask, the Mandalorian got absolutely nuts, grabs Baby Yoda, says, we're going back to the Death Star, follows Batman back, and we have a big happy reunion. Well, happy reunion for the Emperor uh, with Baby Yoda, so he's all happy. Um, but then Batman and Mandalorian and Darth Vader, <laughs> we got this big uh, big old love triangle, triangle going on. So Padme's right in the middle of it. And uh, who's she going to choose? We don't know. Uh, 
you know, so we got to wait till next week. That's uh, that gets you up to date. So they all just came back uh, recently. So I get you up to date with the goings on here in the Death Star. I uh, hope you enjoyed this little segment. We'll, we'll see you next week. Cheers. Good evening. It is I, Count Vlad, and I am here in my beautiful castle. Look at the candlelight. Look at the candlelight. And I've got the candle, too, right here. And it is a beautiful evening. Ah, you see it? It's raining. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> There's so much news to tell you about in the castle today. First of all, the the count is uh, doing very well. Um, we have a big uh, big announcement, and that a big announcement is that Queen Lilith is here. Yes, the beautiful Queen Lilith is uh, here with me, and uh, we are shacking up. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, okay, not really. Uh, she has taken over the castle, and. Uh, I am now put down in a dungeon uh, in a small room, and that's okay. Count Vlad understands she needs her space. You know, we've got like, you know, 1,500 rooms here, but I have to stay in the one. That's okay. And uh, she has me scrubbing her shoes after she comes home from the hunting, and uh, her shoes are all dirty. She she puts them there, and then I have to clean them, and I also have to clean because she walks around in the dirty shoes. And then I have to clean up everywhere where she's walking in the dirty shoes. But that's okay. Because, you know, she's here with the Count, right? And, uh, and yeah, she's very happy. So, I think she is. Uh, she is joined by a vampire friend of hers uh, named Alina. Yes, her name is Lina. And if you read the book, <laughs> shameless, shameless plugging here. If you read the book... Uh, Raven Scythe, you will learn about these characters. So, now, uh, am I spoiling? Do I give a spoiler that uh, they are here with me now? Well, I guess it would be a spoiler if anyone has purchased a book and read it. But to my knowledge, nobody has purchased the book. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Count Vladdy. Cracking himself up. So, this week, we are going to watch... A, oh, what's this? What is this? I am getting a phone call. Oh, who could it be? Who could be calling me? I. Oh, it is my good friend, Count Fangora. Now, every time he calls, he just dominates the conversation. This time, I am going to dominate the conversation, okay? So, I'm going to answer the phone. Hello, Count Fangora. Is, this is Count... What can you do when you fall in love with an AI image that's not from God above? It's a box head, square head, missing head, Lilith. I... You are nuts because you find her attractive. You suck. Count Fangora is here. I'm here to tell you. There's a great grimace coming your way. Don't love Lilith. Lilith is make-believe. That is an AI image, and you're pathetic. Ninkum Pooperuta. You, my friend, have some issues. You need to go to a psychologist. Maybe a gynecologist, too. I don't know. You're all screwed up. It's a strange world you live in. You live in this little bat cave you call a castle. That's jokey. You know what's so funny? You probably run into other vampires on the street and you're like, hey, wanna go back to the bat cave? It's strange, man. That's not what the real vampire does. In your book, Raven Scythe, uh, in Miss Flowers, yes. Miss Flowers, yes. She's the one that wrote that book. Don't lie to yourself. You're on it, your name's there, but she is the, the mathical magician when it comes to Raven Scythe. Okay, couple things. Lilith is real. She's not the AI. She's a real person and she is here with me. Yes, and she says, she says, 
Count of Vlad, I love your hair. She loves my hair. In fact, it reminds her of an animal that she saw on her way in. Ugh. <laughs> you remember that guy. <laughs> okay. Now, let us watch the movie. This is with my favorite vampire, Bella Lugosi, Dracula. It is my favorite, favorite movie. So, let us watch it together. And here we go. I am Dracula. He is the absolute coolest. It's really good to see you. I don't know what happened to the driver and my luggage and... Well, oh, I can tell you. And with all this, I... And we drank I his blood. I was in the wrong happened. place. I bid you welcome. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is such a beautiful castle. Follow the candle. The stairways can't be treacherous. <laughs> How awesome is that? Listen to them. Children of the night. What music they make. Oh, wasn't that great? It was so great. Uh, he says, uh, you know, welcome, good evening. And uh, the children of the night, I uh, love it. Account of our loves it. So if you like this, then hit the subscribe button and, and make sure you like it. <laughs> Leave a comment for the count. I'm happy to answer the comments. And uh, and don't forget to buy the book, Raven Scythe. <laughs> it's so, so Yes, shamelessly plugging because the reason is the authors have told me the Beth and Flowers and the Grant Mila have told me that I will be in the third book. Yes, they have told me that. They have promised me. And so, the Count Vlad will soon be famous in the book just like a Dracula and all those other vampires like the shiny twiddling the twitter vampires the twitter no the twinkling vampires the uh and i will be one of them i will become finally i will be made famous yes so okay everyone it was so good to see you i hope you enjoyed my silly show this is account of vlad saying adieu